Hey everybody, boys, Shasta BK Forest. Welcome to the Commodity Dollar Technical Update for Aussie Dollar, Dollar CAD, Kiwi Dollar for Jan 19th to Jan, excuse me, Jan 14th to Jan 19th, 2018. Comp dollars were the clear winners in the um, trading game this week. The Antipodeans, especially the Aussie and the Kiwi, really put on a very strong show, primarily because U.S. yields started to really come in as the week progressed on the assumption or on the belief now that the Fed is very much in a halt mode certainly through March, perhaps even all the way through June, that created a widening of the spread between Aussie, um, Aussie yields and, and Kiwi yields and the U.S. yields and really helped drive both much higher than I think anybody anticipated. Aussie took out 72s, Kiwi took out the 68 handle, and both pretty much ended right above there um, as, we, uh, as we closed the week. So very much worth noting. The levels on Aussie Kiwi are essentially very close to here in terms of resistance. The resistance is around 72.50 for the Aussie, 69 for, for the Kiwi. CAD was its own story. Um, it had a much sharper and stronger correction the week before because this oil started to finally bounce back from its all, all lows. CAD got a little bit of a boost. And also the BOC, the Bank of Canada this week, was more hawkish than the market believed. Even though they held off on hiking rates, they, they basically said that if the oil prices stabilize, and they can essentially um, feel a little bit more confident about the trade situation that um, very much they are on path towards hiking more. So it's quite likely that we might have a hike out of BOC in March, whereas we won't have a hike out of the Fed in March. And that certainly should uh, help dollar cad push its way back down to 130. For now, the 34 is the near-term resist. 31 is the real near-term support. And of course, the really big round number 130 is the big support. As we go forward, we'll take a look at the charts in just a second. The calendar is really barren next week. We've got nothing on the calm dollar side, um, literally nothing until all the way till Friday when we get the Canadian CPI data. That's pretty much the only uh, point of interest for anybody who's trading Funda. That should actually be, we're mildly bullish that um, uh, the data point uh, because we've had rises in uh, prices according to IVPMI. But you know, it's it's a 20 pip trade. There's really nothing going on here as far as uh, the fundamental drivers that are going to go on. The big events are all going to be in the Atlantic, in the uh, in UK, and Brexit, and all those other things. And of course, equity flows. If the um, risk on flows continue to uh, perform well, and if U.S. yields continue to kind of um, de compress a little bit, that should all provide better uh, tone for Aussie and Kiwi. Having taken out some very big levels here. It's impressive that they're able to hold them for the time being. So let's take a look at the charts here and just see how the charts are shaping out. Let's take a look at Kiwi first. Um, go to dailies. Sorry, I'm on the hourly here for a second. Um, and it's a very, very nice looking V-shaped uh, recovery. We took out the 20 SMA here with gusto today. Um, now, you know, the natural support, as I said, is around the 67 level. Although we are entering into this forest of resistance from the 16... 850 or 60 yeah 6850 essentially to 69 i think it's going to be very hard for it to overcome and then of course we have the incredibly large 70 resistance as it goes further but um, momentum looks good um i would say this problem maybe there's another 30 40 pips more to the upside on the kiwi but this is not a situation where i would want to really chase the trade if i am going to get along the trade i definitely want to use today's low or say 67 80 maximum as my stop point, because if we get this push up in a full reversal, that'll be a very negative technical construct. This is only an uptrend as long as we can hold the lows here uh, of the uh, of today's close. So uh, the risk to me would be just underneath the uh, the lows of the day today on the Kiwi. Uh, Aussie, pretty much the same thing. Aussie, not as um, pretty a chart. The one interesting tell on the Aussie was the, the fat finger crash that we had last week, the very big recovery, and then a very, very powerful move through the highs of the day before, the day before that was a really good signal. There's more extension as we go forward. But as you see today, we couldn't hold those highs because we're now running into this very, very decent resistance over here. And I think as we get into next week, which doesn't have any fundamental catalysts, it's going to be hard to drive this this higher. Um, and I think the technical aspects are going to play a much bigger role here. So if, if, if the technicals are going to be the dominant factor that drive trade, you kind of have to fade this move um, into the 7250s. Basically, anywhere from 7250 to 73, I'd want to fade the move with a stop at 74. Because obviously, if we, you know, if we're going to plow through this thing through the 7374s, 
there's a much bigger, more potent force. I don't want to be in the way of it. But I think it's a reasonable trade to, to short the 7250s, 73s, on the assumption that we're just going to probably come back a little bit um, and uh, uh, consolidate. Overall, Aussie certainly making a broad, broad, longer-term base here. And the longer implications of this particular move, especially if we push up, is probably that it's going to be a buy-to-dip trade for the near term, assuming things settle down. Um, if we have a major reversal, and to me, a major reversal today uh, on this trade, what would really turn this trade from mildly bullish to just ugly, ugly bearish is if we took, if we basically dipped below the 71 handle. If we were not, well, we don't have to get into the 70s. I think if we just get here into this negative handle, that would suggest a lower high, essentially a distribution high over here. And I would, at that point, I'd really want to be short the trade um, for potential break of this, uh, this, you know, fat finger move that we saw the week before. Um, for now, as I said, mildly bullish cast, but really I'd, I'd like to fade the um, the highs here. I think the range highs are going to get exhausted. We don't have any real reason or impetus for this thing to get much higher than this as we go forward. And then last but not least, Caddy is, um, had a huge reversal, which not surprised. We had, look at this massive move. We had a huge, huge move. So very natural for us to come back to the moving average, uh, correct this, this huge overbought situation, which in fact we did. We definitely corrected the overbought situation. And if you look here, you see the actual um, story that charts are telling you is that dollar cat is a buy um, in a sense that we've bottomed out. This, this corrective move has kind of lost its uh, full push. The low here is what? Around um, 3180. Uh, that's pretty much the low against. If you want to trade this back to the upside, in other words, if you think that we have a continuation of this uptrend which you've had which you've had since june right on the dailies um we, we broke the 20 now we're going to try to move back up to the 20 which will be around 33 3350 um against this risk of 3180 that's not a that's not a bad risk and it's worth trading what makes me even more bullish dollar cad into the close is the fact that we kind of closed pretty much on the highs big reversal move here that typically suggests continuation uh to me not, not much data set here, so it's really it's all going to be contingent on yields, flow, all those other things that uh, that are very hard to call. But between here and there, it's probably about a hundred points of possible trade here with decent risk. That's how the uh, the calm dollar set up for the week. Wish you guys the best luck, the best of trading. Or Schlossberg, over and out.